Hey guys, I am supposed to be live on my YouTube channel right now. And for those of you who showed up for it, I, on your end, it worked fine. But on my end, there was no camera. Like the camera wouldn't show me myself. And I thought about sitting there for the hour and talking to a blank screen, but I just felt like awkward if it just felt like it wasn't going to work. And so I just am going to record as if I'm live. I am going to not do any editing. This is going to be as if I'm live. I'm inviting your energy in as if you are live here. So um, we're going to just jump right in. And I am excited for today's topic because we're talking about our own personal currency. I really believe it's something that I've seen. I was shown a vision of this a really long time ago, and I've been learning how to access it, open it up and expand it within me ever since. And that is, I saw this image of our toroidal field when we've opened our heart and we're not blocked in our invincibility or our uniqueness, when we're not stuck in mimic and stuck in self-hatred and self-condemnation. And this is particularly true for empaths. When these three centers of our self is open, the heart, the invincibility chakra, and the uniqueness chakra above and below the heart. Th when we're open here, our energy becomes fully self-sustaining. I believe this is how we turn our toroidal field on. I believe this is responsible for all true abundance. And when I say abundance in this context with our personal currency, our personal currency transcends in many different ways, money as a whole, because there are certain things that money can't buy, but our energy signature and our resonance can shift absolutely anything, any circumstance. I really believe this is the most underlooked, probably an understudied aspect, even in the new age world of what it means to be human. You don't hear many people talking about it. And it's probably because most systems, including the new age world, um, is stuck in mimic. Most systems are stuck in mimic. And so to really access what I'm going to be sharing with you, I've shared with you a little bit before, for those of you who follow me, it's a little more detailed. Um, I've been going pretty deep into this. I've been doing a lot of trial and error. I feel like I've gotten really good at manifesting. Manifesting is something that I feel like I have a handle on. And I feel like because I've learned that, I've learned at an even deeper level how important it is to be extremely clear in your energy. Because as I've said so many times, often things that we think we want or think we need to manifest actually really aren't really aren't what we really want. We, we It's like what we really want is underneath it. And we think that's what it is, especially because we're fed so much about what we should have and should want, especially at certain ages or certain time periods in our life. So there's a lot of things that influence how we feel and, and how how abundant we feel, whether or not we actually have money or not. And there are people who have plenty of money in their bank account. Money's not an issue, but they're very lacking in other areas. So when we really allow our toroidal field to be turned on and we allow our personal currency to be what we move with, what we exchange energy with, what we invest in with, and we learn how it works. We learn how it fuels different realities and, and how it gives back to us too. Once we learn that it's, I think it's the ultimate tool for navigating any reality and learning how to use our personal currency. It transcends money because at this point, we're learning how to jump timelines, how to shift timelines, how to um, how to even shift subtly in different parallel realities. And most importantly, which I think what our energy field does when we're fully turned on is that we become incredibly discerning. We become incredibly discerning of spirits and of grid spaces that we're in. Now, the only way to really break free from the lack matrix, to really activate your personal currency, so you're no longer spending money, spending your energy, but you're rather investing it back into yourself. The only way to get out of that is when we fully unplug from mimic. And as I've said so many times, most of us are plugged into mimic, whether we realize it or not. We have been so fused with mimic and the mimic has been fused with our survival and a lot of our primal instincts that the signal uh, around our personal currency is very much, can be very much numbed out. And so 
what I want to do in today's live is give you some tools, first of all, to understand what your personal currency is, um, how to recognize when your currency is in grid spaces that are draining you, and how to remove your energy from those spaces, how to remove your currency out of spaces that don't serve you and back into yourself because that's your ultimate investment is yourself, your inheritance, your energy signature, your unique currency that you have to exchange with the world. It is so valuable because you're the only one that has it. You're the only one that can offer what you offer. And I find the impacts in particular, and it's kind of drumming up right now. I, I feel like I want to do a whole um, podcast on <laughs> kind of what I've observed since 2020 in our grids and impact grids and what's happening now and the shakedown that's happening because um, there's people in power that have been in power that are losing power. And so there's the powers that were that are holding on. And I've said this before, but we can get very bullied by principalities and principalities are primary beliefs that hold together a grid space. So when you go even into a different area on the globe, you're working with a different grid space because people in different locations tend to have similar beliefs. It's not always, even if it's not necessarily a religion that they agree on, it's just similar culture, similar belief, similar way of being. And that's why those principalities get strong in certain areas because the more people that believe in a principality and act accordingly, the more we give our energy to that principality. And those principalities sort of basically end up governing us, especially when they're believed in so strongly by so many people, They be it becomes subconscious. So it becomes automatic. And these are real spiritual energies. I've been talking about this quite a bit. This is real energy. It's real entity entities, and they can bully us. A, a grid space can totally bully you, especially if you don't know what you personally believe and what your personal beliefs are. So somebody who hasn't opened up their personal currency, who haven't, who hasn't truly activated and been able to sustain their own toroidal field, which is most people, um, but especially empaths, what empaths tend to do when they don't anchor in their own will and they their creative preference doesn't matter usually is when they're still in the mindset, the, the way that they navigate their life is on being good, being right, doing the right thing, being good um, or helping or solving things. Nothing wrong with any of that in and of itself. However, Sometimes what we think of as good or right is the opposite of what we should do. And sometimes um, trying to help and fix and solve something is actually not helpful at all and can make the, the problem worse. Um, and most importantly, most empaths who believe that they at a core level have to be good in order to have their needs met, we're just off. We're outside of our power because to put that um, clause on whether we can receive or not. Well, we have to be good first. We have to we have to be a good person in order to receive and in order to have things that we want or in order for our preference to matter. Um, or we have to be respected or whatever it is, the, the clause that we put on why we should or shouldn't receive, that pretty much owns us. That's where, that's the, those are the principalities that we're the most married to is whatever we put in our clause, whatever we personally believe we have to attain or do or be in order to receive. And the most important thing is to know what that is for you. And um, this, I'm not gonna go super deep into that in today's live. Today's gonna be sort of an overview, but this, all the information, if you, if you really wanna go deeper into this, I am releasing a whole class on this called The Spell of Astronomical Abundance, and it's being released on Thinkific on April 8th. It's a shorter mini course, but it really is like packed with information, with affirmations, with, with meditations, everything to help you really open up your personal currency field. So um, just know if you want to go deeper into this, that's available on April 8th. Eight, and everybody who is watching this, I know it's meant to be live. Um, it was supposed to be everybody live, but obviously it's not going, going to work in this way. But everybody who's watching this and everybody who comments on this video, a takeaway that you got from this will receive a coupon for 30, for 30, well, I forgot the percentage off it is. The course is $88 and it gives you um, 
it gives you it for 55. So it's like $33 off the course. Um, if you, if you want, it's a mini course inexpensive, but it'll go super deep into this. And I figured that would be the easiest way because there's so much content here and I didn't want to overwhelm the live with too much. And I know that there needs to be follow-up and all of that. So anyway, let's just dive right in before we get started. I want to say for everyone in my YouTube membership, for those of you who are not in my YouTube membership, we are working on the ACE of wands course and we are on spell two. And, um, one of the things that I did with mine, I had, I kind of suggested to do an oil infusion for like working with different herbs and putting your intentions in there. But I had some of my herbs left over and I, I have a charcoal right here. I'm going to burn. There's several herbs in here that have been part of my second spell, my yes. Um, for those of you who are following the Ace of Wands, you know, and if you want to be in the Ace of Wands, join the membership because it's pretty badass and there's way more coming too. Um, but what I decided to do, there is, there is, um, mugwort in this, which I haven't worked with a ton. And it's just so, it's so helpful for prophetic stuff and for channeling. So I wanted to have that going while we're here. And then um, I made an oil infusion with it. There's several different herbs and I'm not going to say all of them just because I feel like I want my spell work to be more private, but mugwort is one of them. And then I also made a fairy cigarette with it as well. I'm not someone who believes in smoking. I don't think you should smoke. I'm not encouraging smoking. I do once in a while smoke herbs though. And I, I do it in conjunction with working and with working with herbs and um, they can be really, it can be really powerful. So I've had some of this too, which just has a mix of, these are all herbs you can get at a regular store. So nothing, um, nothing like weird in here, but um, just wanted to share that for those of you who are in the YouTube membership, because there's lots of different ways that you can work with the herbs that you're working with for the spell. And in this case, I'm evoking this energy here because I think it's perfect. Um, this spell is all connected to Yes, our resonance, our resonential, the resonance, the residence of our yes. Where do we live when we are in the full primal yes of our bodies? And this is the thing I've been talking about that I feel like empaths in particular, humans in particular, have gotten off course here with our primal instincts because we have our programming's just been messed up. And, but something that's happened is that we haven't, we're not primal. We're not deeply in our bodies and we're not activated through our primal instincts. Any species when they're in their body, they're first and foremost, their, their body and the, the technology of what you came in to be is part of what protects you. And that primal instinct is protective in nature. And I really believe that it's the primal instinct that has been the most eroded for empaths. It's our primal instincts. And this is connected to being in the body. It's connected to pleasure and preference. It's also connected to consent. Now, one of the things that has happened globally, and I've talked about this before too, and I know I'm sure all of you who watch this can feel this. It, does, it doesn't even need like, it's just, it's just self-evident that our, the whole grid of this planet has been taken over and that it's like what we're being pumped, what's being fed to us is fear. And we know that fear keeps us in a low vibration. And when we're in a low vibration, we're more likely to give our power away. And that that's just what we do when we're in fear. We also have been continuing to be programmed with this idea that we don't actually have power. Most people don't even realize how powerful they individually are. And th these are all reasons why our personal currency doesn't get turned on. We don't even realize how freaking powerful it is. Because as I was saying in the beginning, you transcend money. Once we all learn how to drive our vehicle, our extra dimensional vehicle, our toroidal field, how to turn it on, how to um, expand it and how to sustain it, there will be no need for actual money. We will be doing trade in an entirely different way. And when we're in that space, we understand that energy is abundance and that all there's all different sorts of energies. And there's energies that we can commune with that lower our our, our personal energy that turns that that gets us on empty or very, very low that doesn't give back to us. 
And there's energy that's very hard to recover from once we're a part of it or, or once we participate with it. And there's energy that feeds us and fuels us and lights us up and turns on our primal instincts. Those are the type of energies that we have been conveniently trained out of receiving. We've been shamed and guilted out of receiving those kind of energies. And we have, especially with impasse, the rhetoric around receiving, around preference and around pleasure has been distorted. So it's important that if we are, if we're really wanting to turn on our personal currency and transcend the whole matrix, because once you have that on, you've learned how to master living and that includes money. And I think that, and it includes relationships, which is where a lot of empaths are bankrupt, not because a lot of empaths that have money and I've worked with them, empaths that have money, but relationally are very drained because they're in, they're energetically in so many grid places where they've had just had to serve. And it's been about duty. Duty is one of those energies that will shut down that has the potential and the power to completely shut down our creative instincts, duty. And because we're so steeped in the victim aggressor savior paradigm, we're so steeped in that storyline that we, we, we've collectively put the hero above all else, like the one who sacrifices for everyone and everything, as if that's the full attainment of being a human. And that has gotten so deeply in and twisted because as I've said before, there are times that we sacrifice and it is actually one of those things about humans that are remarkable, the way we will sacrifice ourselves for, for our own species. It is connected to our survival mechanisms though. And it's connected to why we are meant in our natural technology to be in communion because we are for each other. But because we have been given this program of being against our humanity, we've been given a program a program of being against ourselves, against our pleasure, against our thriving, against our wellness. And we've just been shoved, it's like shoved candy and, and distraction and entertainment here, just kill yourself don't really actually be in your body and don't really actually feel what's going on. Because if you did, you wouldn't, there's no way you would stay in that state. There is no way, no way our technology doesn't work that way. So it's a pretty astounding feat that has happened on this planet where humans have been programmed out of self-care, have been programmed out of um, self-initiation, have been programmed out of self-responsibility have been programmed out of self-power. Like we've been programmed out of all of these things. And when we, as we wake up to this and change it, we are a huge, enormous, inconvenient threat. But it goes beyond threat. It's like, we are just, we will, and we do, and we are just creating the world we want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Once you've decided that you will no longer let your personal currency be used to support the lack matrix, it doesn't matter what that lack matrix does from that point on. There are some tricky things to this though, because we are human and we do love and all of our currency comes from our heart, the wellspring of life. We are relational to our core. And so everything about how we function when it comes to our wellness and thriving, that includes money, everything under the under the umbrella of abundance. When it comes to this whole area, when it comes to thriving in this way, if we don't have a strong, visceral, primal preference, we default into the victim, aggressor, savior paradigm. And we usually default into serving with a grid. Who, who do we need to serve? Who do we need to, to be there for? Who, do, what problem do we need to fix? What do we need to solve? How do we need, how can we make ourselves small? So we're not threatening to anybody. There's all of this hypervigilance that goes on behind the scenes in an empath energetically that affects everything about every single interaction that we have. And I think a lot of empaths, at least me and a lot of empaths that I've worked with, it seems like for a long time, empaths have been waking up to the BS, have been seeing that it's non-sustainable and it's nonsensical to remain energetically in the dynamics that we've been, that we've remained in. But getting out is tricky because when we come out, we get um, bullied by all the principalities of lack. And one of the biggest bullies are you're selfish, you're a bad person. You like, you only care about yourself. That, that, that's a big one because that's one of the reasons that will impact will sacrifice themselves for somebody else. 
So you guys all know this, and this is like kind of um, yesterday's talk, but nonetheless, I wanted to preface, preface all of that because what I'm asking us to do, what I'm doing, and I'm so aware there's so much I haven't shared yet and so much that's coming. I feel like the last few years for me, they're just not ready to be um, fully shared yet because I have, I'm still integrating a lot of lessons, but I'm at that point where I'm like, whoa, holy shit. I feel like I've graduated and I feel like I have learned so much. I've learned a whole new level of um, boundaries. I've, I've learned a whole new level of, of personal currency. Primarily I've learned, um, and all the sneaky, sneaky ways that our energy gets trapped in these lack dynamics or called in, seduced in. Um, I've learned the triggers, at least for me, that that can trigger those dynamics. So I have so much to say, but what I want to focus on here is a few main things. And I wrote them down too. One is the, going back to the heart. All of our currency comes from the heart. This is our wellspring of life. If we do not have love energy, we have nothing to give. We are lovers to our core. We are relational to our core. And it doesn't matter how logical you think you are, or if you don't feel like you're fit in that category. If you are a human being, that is your deepest nature is to be relational. And that's why our, our thriving, our thriving is connected to communion, but we can't have communion without sovereign, not true communion without sovereignty. Otherwise it's manipulation. Otherwise there's fear, guilt, and shame being used. So we've got to get so comfortable with loving. And that's number one. And most empaths, here is where we've been wounded. Most human beings, like if you're in this body, if you're in a body on this planet, you came here to learn these relational things. And so most likely you've been wounded in the heart. Our heart at some point, everybody's heart gets broken. And that's one of the most, the hardest things about being human is to have our heart, which is so sophisticated and so incredibly it's just rich it's our wellspring of life to have it broken and when the heart is broken that's when things go awry that's when so much of what that not feeling safe not feeling securely attached not feel, feeling calm or regulated in our central nervous system none of these are wrong we came how to learn we came here to learn how to do this to learn how to break and restore because we're invincible that way. That's what makes us eternal. And that's why we keep coming down to tell stories. So without getting too existential on that side, I want you to really think about your heart and even just take a second to feel your heart. To take a deep breath and just to feel the edges of your heart. Feel where your heart energy goes out. Because you you can feel it. There's energy that moves in all directions from the heart. And there's areas of our hearts that are wounded, that are um, numbed out, that have a wall around them that we can't feel. Now that hugely messes with our instincts because our instincts come from our relational sensitivities. So obviously number one, and this might seem like, well, duh, but at the same time, you can't access your personal, you can't really activate your personal currency without your heart being opened and restored. So I wanted to start here because it is a restored heart that opens us up to heaven on earth, a restored heart. So we have to accept exactly where we are. We have to work with ourselves exactly where we are. And this is where a lot of empaths go wonky on their path because we, especially if there's been trauma in our lives, especially if we haven't been securely attached and we don't know deep inside that we're loved and that we have value. If any of that has been shaken in our past or especially in our childhood, it can be very difficult to know and to feel rooted in the energy of I'm enough. There's enough. You're enough. Because we have to, we believe based on our experience, our beliefs are created through our experiences. So if we have had experiences that have taught us that we're unworthy, that we're not enough and that we have to earn it, we have to earn our abundance, we have to earn love, then it is going to be really difficult for us to access our personal heaven on earth currency because that's rooted in unconditional love. It's rooted in our eternal selves, which is both fiercely here and protective of the now and also um, healthily detached because we're eternal. And the moment 
even though the moment is all there really is, it also is fleeting. So we have this task before us, which is the biggest one. And there's so many authors and, and healers and therapists and channelers and amazing people to work with if you're here. But know that if you're here, here meaning my heart is broken, that that's the most valuable information that you can have about yourself because then you know where to work. And then it's that exploration of where am I broken? What needs have I not had met that are that are attempting to get met through all this bullshit that I do? Through how I work, through how I show up, through how I try to be a good friend, through whatever. The whole trying to be a good person is is so sadly one of our biggest downfalls because we are innately good. We don't have to try to be good. We are innately loving. We don't have to try to be loving. We are innately relational. We don't have to try to be relational. That this is part of our tech. There's been damage here. There's been there's been inherited trauma here. So it could even just be the trauma you inherited from your family line, which a lot of us did. And nonetheless, this is where we first have to work is our heart and opening our heart. And so first step as I'm making it sound very simple, but it's the biggest one. It's the the hardest one, I think. And it's it's where I think most of us have been working for several years now. So I feel like you're right here. Even if there's parts of you that are still broken, there's always times we're still going to feel heartache. But what I mean by restored heart is that you're restored back unto yourself, that you're restored back into that sense of I am enough. I am whole. There's enough. I'm loved. There's, there's something bigger than me. There's something bigger than me that loves me and that is witnessing me. And I've witnessed myself my whole life. I have a witness. I'm not going to abandon myself. For me, it was starting with myself because I grew up believing in God and, 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 and I loved God, but I also had a lot of confusing ideals about what God was. And I spent a lot of energy just trying to be what God wanted me to be, which led me down so many different paths. And then I realized God wants me to be who I am and who I'm created to be. And then I realized, well, what is that? Well, I don't know, because I didn't know what my preference was because I spent so many years of my life trying to figure out what God's will was that I had no idea what my will even was, nor did I have an idea of what God's will was other than love. And I realized, okay, well, what's beyond that? Like, how, how do I live my life? Like, what do you want me to do? What job do you want me to have? I used to be so concerned about it. I remember talking to my pastor once, like setting up a meeting because I didn't know where to go to college. And I was so worried about doing something that God didn't want me to do. And I didn't know how to discern God's will. And I remember he said to me, there's some things that you just get to make the choice. Like God doesn't have to make every single choice for you. And obviously my beliefs are so much different now than they were then, but that has always stuck with me. Like even my pastor, quote unquote, gave me permission to have a will. And especially in those times where we don't know what God's will is, or we're not sure. And I obviously believe in praying for the highest good of all. And I think that's a really good when you're unsure um, to just like, well, what's best for everyone, myself, what's best for me and everybody involved. That's what I choose. That's what I want. I don't always know what it is, but spirit does. And I want to line up to that. But nonetheless, I kind of got off track right there. The main thing I want you to be aware of is your heart, your heart center. And that you, this is where all of your life force comes from, where you have needs that are unmet or is going to be areas that you're more depleted and where you have maybe have energy that you're hoarding because we often do that when we're in trauma, we have love to give, but we won't give it because we don't feel safe or we don't feel securely attached. You might actually have so much to give that it's like wants to overflow out of you, but you haven't felt safe where to give it because usually when you give love, you're completely consumed by whatever grid that is or whatever people that you're giving it to. And I understand that. And that, that can cause us to not want to love at all and not want to, not want to offer our heart energy because we get drained and it's connected to boundaries and everything that I know you guys have been working on for a while, but I wanted to bring us back here to this place because this is where it all begins. And that's why I like this checking in with yourself every day from the heart, all of your, think of your money and everything connected to your abundance and thriving coming from the heart. It can get stuck in other parts of the body. It can be stuck in different chakras, but it's coming from the heart. When it gets stuck in a certain chakra, that's usually indicative of where we've been wounded. So maybe it's stuck in my throat 
And I can't actually say what I mean or what I want because I've had a wound that I'm not allowed to speak my needs or not allowed to say what my needs are. So if that's the case, then I know that the heart energy is getting stuck in the throat and I need to be, I need to speak my needs. I need to just say them. Even if I started out by just writing them for me or even exploring what they might be. This is just an example that energy because it moves the self-sustaining toroidal field. So it, it goes around your whole body up up back through your root chakra back in it's this it's a toroidal field and i recommend looking up the pattern if you're unfamiliar with it. it can it's so coded it is so coded it's crazy i feel like all this stuff is hidden right in plain sight and you don't actually have to be a genius or study a bunch of hermetics or ancient philosophies to even understand it because it's innate they help it helps especially when you have a mind that wants to deeply understand things in a logical way but actually we get it and we get it intuitively. We get it instinctually. We know these things. So it just might take, it just might take a while to get used to realizing that all your power is here, not in your, not in your root, not in any other chakra. It's in the heart. If we don't have a heart. We die. If the heart stops beating, we die. So it's just, it's the wellspring of life above all else. Watch over your heart because it is the wellspring of life. This is where everything comes from. And this is also why a lot of times with money, we sell, we sell ourselves out and we, we end up doing things that sacrifice our relationships. And in the end, it's a, it's a price that's too high to pay because we're relational to our be to our core. We can't just survive on money and eventually money is useless, especially if you don't have relationships, relationships are everything. All abundance comes from relationships, how we are relating to ourselves, to others, to the planet, to the grid, to the system. So how do you feel? How are you relating? Notice where your energy is like pulled into people and where you get repelled from people or situations or things, because all of that's indicative of where you, where there might be blocks. Some of us get blocked in our root or our sacral chakra, where we can't, we block down our creativity or we block down our sensuality because we feel like it's wrong or we have unhealed trauma there or whatever. And so it gets stuck there. We know that we can move it through there. So just like with the throat chakra, I may have, if it's stuck here, I may have to speak my needs. If it's in my sacral chakra, I might have to get really comfortable feeling pleasure and even pleasure in the smallest ways. Like what's my favorite color? What color do I, I just want to look at? What flowers do I love to look at? What, what turns me on and what turns on my senses getting really comfortable with pleasure. That's how we would unblock the sacral chakra, if our heart energy was stuck there, if our life currency, our personal currency was stuck there, but it's stuck somewhere. If you're not feeling abundant in your life, in any area of your life, there's somewhere the heart energy is getting stuck. Now, a lot of times energetically it's, well, always not a lot of times, but always at a core level, it's our beliefs that keep us stuck. And it's our beliefs that were created through our experiences that that we reinforce over and over again. So if we believe we can't speak what we need or we can't feel pleasure, if those are our core beliefs, it really doesn't matter how much work we do around it. We have to actually change the core belief. And the only way to change a core belief is to have a new experience. And that's why there's so many tools that you can use like for unmet needs and that or needs that you never had met from the past going in via meditation and changing the scenario, even if it didn't happen that way, just still changing it, going back to that version of you that didn't get whatever they needed and giving it to them, giving it to them now, giving it to them energetically, because that's how we begin to change timelines. And there's so much information about this. I know a lot of you who are already into this. So you, you know, the concept here, but the idea is to start with your heart. This is to turn on your personal currency Notice where it comes, where it's, how it's moving in your body, where it's coming out, where it's blocked, where you're open to, to relationship and where you're closed down to relationship, what relationships you're open to and what relationships you're closed down to. Now, when we're talking about abundance, often it's money that we're talking about. And I find a lot of empaths in general get so stuck here on money because we just tend to do things because we want to do the right thing or we want to be a good person or we want to help or fix or solve, which is very good. It's like, it's a, it's an amazing um, instinct to have and it's useful. It just has to be used with discernment. It has to be, otherwise it can completely drain us. And so 
I find that a lot of empaths, especially empaths who do the kind of work similar to me, maybe you do sessions, maybe you do, uh, you read birth charts or you do Reiki or you're a massage therapist, or you do some type of herbalism, but that idea where you work with patients, not patients, clients or patients, it could be, um, you work with clients, you work to help people, you're using your gifts sort of in that way. Oh, this grid is exhausted. This grid is exhausted. I don't feel like empaths in this grid have figured out for the most part, I'm speaking generally, some have, of course, but I feel like in general, this grid has not figured out how to be self-sustaining. And the biggest issue I find with this grid, and I've experienced it personally, and I feel like this is one of those areas that I'm going to be able to speak to so well, because my life is changing so much and my foundations are changing so much. And I've said it for a while, but I've been very behind the scenes doing this, but there's a lot happening. And I can't wait to share it all. My, my, I swear, eventually I'm, my plan is to share a lot more. It just hasn't been timing. It's not been timing number one, and I'm still in it. Um, and part of discerning is just being careful about when and what you share and where you're at in the process before you share it. So that's a, also a big part of why I haven't shared a lot, a lot of what's going on, but nonetheless, um, this area right here for impasse is one that I feel that I like to speak to a lot is to empath entrepreneurs and creative people. I feel like we interlapped a lot like healers and creators and artists. There's such an, there's such an overlap of our type of work and the artists that's creative people. That's also a similar area where often not always, but often people just struggle financially. A big part of this is because now I think it's kind of strange when you think about it, you're the gift that you're offering the world that you're often charging for literally takes all of you. It's such a profound gift. So overlooked when it comes to being valued at all. People want it, but they also feel like they can take it or leave it, but they really can't leave it. Like we all need, we all need healers in our lives and we need people who can witness. We need people who can see multidimensionally, who can help us work through like um, knotted energy grids especially with our belief systems, because it's our beliefs that hold us in certain grid spaces. So I feel like there's this, there's this really powerful grid that's being activated. I've known it for a while that it feels like spirit wants us to be incredibly abundant, not just a little bit abundant, very abundant, not just financially. Okay. Extremely. Okay. It's important for many, many, many reasons and even look at here how you feel about that, because there's a lot, especially in the healer spiritual grid, there's a lot of beliefs about money and a lot of beliefs about money being wrong or bad or charging for something being wrong or bad that I think most people who follow me are over that. But nonetheless, that that influences our grid, because a lot of people who are attracted to this kind of work often, especially if they're more unhealed are in that belief system of money being wrong. Also in this, in this system of feeling so poor, feeling so energetically poor and maybe even financial being very financially poor. And so it feels almost like everything's against you, including anyone who charges money for anything. That's a whole different thing, like charging and what you're charging for and all that, but it's loaded. And I'm bringing it up because it's one of the grids that I believe there is so much alchemy taking place on this grid. And one of the biggest places that one of the biggest things that needs to alchemicalize is our understanding of what money and exchange is, because if we really understood what we do in a grid, we would allow ourselves to just receive and you would know that the universe will pay you in all different sorts of ways. Yes, money. Yes, you need money. And yes, charge. If that's what you're feeling called to do, or some people don't, and some people thrive not charging. So I'm, there's not just one way, but I'm just saying money is included. And with this, with these kind of gifts, with intuitive gifts, with, with anything in this like creative intuitive realm, it's such a huge part of us. It's, it takes up so much space within us to use our art and our craft in that way that we have to, have to, have to, have to be so discerning about what we give our energy to. And this is the place where it fucks with our image of being good and right and all those things. Because what I've learned, 
and I, I believe that everywhere I've been, I've been meant to be. So everything I've done in the past, I have zero regrets for, but everything I've done, I've learned. And the one thing that I, this is, this is something I've said before, but when I first started doing this, I didn't charge for anything. I would do classes. I would do free classes, but I are like donation based classes. And sometimes people could pay and sometimes they couldn't. And sometimes people really could afford to pay. But since it's donation based, they pay you like 10 bucks or 20 bucks. And to them, they're like, oh, this is great. And um, I learned so much through not charging or doing donation based. One, I learned so many shadow con contracts can exist there. It's insane. Um, I worked way harder in those free classes than I've done on any other class ever because I wanted to, to, to do such a good job, um, but really made nothing. You end up attract, I ended up, I know every situation is different, but I ended up attracting a lot of people, not, not everyone, because I also, I don't regret any of it. And I met some of the coolest people and thank God I opened up those spaces. I want to make sure I'm saying this because I some of the coolest people came into my life through that and it was exactly what they needed. And, and it was perfect that I wasn't charging. So I'm not saying it's, I have any regret about this. I'm just saying what I've learned as a whole, as a strategic whole, way too draining, way, give way too much of myself, not make enough money, and then in, end up attracting people. A lot of people who are attracted to free stuff are people who have such deep needs and feel so powerless inside and truly do not believe they have it. Like I just, I, I would say people who truly are just, they just have need, need, need. It's like a never ending need because there's something that there's a, there's a leakage that needs to be stopped. And often they need professional help for that. So it, this is all kind of a little bit off the subject, but the reason I'm saying this all is because we, the one thing I've learned, I would say above all else is that we can get really good at adjusting our energy so that we attract exactly what we want and that our preference does matter. We're not just meant to help everybody. And we're not like that whole idea that you, you just should help if you can. And I, I know it sounds bitchy even saying it because there's so many people who are diehard, like humanitarian type of people that you should just be good and happy no matter what. And to be honest, that is one of the number one reasons I started backing away from doing free stuff and even from posting on YouTube at all as a whole, because again, often it attracts people who um, I, I would just say are in deep energetic poverty. And so anything free, including a free video sometimes with people who have that deep need is consumed, but you're not, it's not just your content content that is consumed. It's all of you. You get entirely consumed. And I realized that as I started becoming more public and I quickly realized I didn't want to be as public as I was and, or that, that I could be because, oh, and that, this is just a whole nother thing, but the, the, the grid of celebrity not to say I, I'm in that grid at all, but just that I'm going to call it that, but that grid, especially in like all the micro celebrities that we have now from just being online, put sharing yourself online, people having access to you that you don't know at all. There's a whole mental illness it, that I think is deeply exacerbates humans desire to worship, but also exacerbates that idea that, that we're nothing in and of ourselves, that we have nothing. A whole, this is just like, again, a whole nother soapbox I could get on, but I bring it up here because overall the, the energetic grid that I feel that is wanting to be turned on right now, completely turned on is for empath entrepreneurs and for anyone who is wanting to invest their creative energy into heaven on earth. And that means who you are, you're investing your whole self. So when we're working with our energy in that way, we have to understand that we are invaluable, that there actually isn't a price tag you could put on your value. That's what I've realized. And if you, if you give yourself to, to the wrong people, it has no value. It completely drains what you have to give. And then you don't have to give it to the people who you are meant to give it to. And the people who you are meant to give it to when we're in abundance, when we're in the heaven on earth vibration, and it it is natural when you're in your personal currency, 
when your personal currency is turned on, when your heart is open and you're primally aware of your relationships and you primally prefer and pivot, that keeps everybody safe. When we're in that space, the people that we, that are in, that share the same space of us as us also are primally there, also primally prefer to be there. And immediately because of that alone, give to you because they're already self-sustaining. They're not an empty black hole trying to pull more from you that you're trying to save, but it's again, sovereignty and sovereignty coming together, which boom, creates more power. And you can think of the like flower of life pattern to really envision this model of interdependence because we, we do need each other. We need each other. We need each other to make money. We need each other to, to have our needs met. It, it, we need each other. We, there's no way it, this war with humanity is utterly nonsensical to me. Utterly nonsensical. We will not survive without each other. We have to, regardless of how bad we want to fight the bad guy, we have to learn to respect humanity, to respect or to work with our humanity and respect it. Because that's the biggest issue. The human our humanity, our heart is our gold. That's our currency. And we are draining that currency because we have zero respect for humanity. We don't respect our humanity. We don't respect other people's humanity. We work ourselves like cattle and like slaves. And we, 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 we basically give ourselves to the mimic program in a way that so undermines our true gifts and our true value. And then we wonder why we feel so empty all the time. So I really believe there's a huge shakeup going on in this grid. And I believe that the way to actually shift the money that you're making, although there is 3D stuff to do, and I can speak to this huge because I have backed way far away from like anything right now. I've been, I've been working on content, but I don't make money. I've hardly made any money. However, I've managed to have all my needs met and I've learned even in moments, especially when I'm like, okay, I absolutely have to make money. Like, what should I do? But I can't work and I won't work this kind of work anyway, when I'm not in alignment. And so, um, obviously there's other things I can do to make money. I've done freelance writing. I've, you know, like if it were in, if I needed to work and I'm not above working another job or anything like that, but what I've learned is that if I shift my energy, if I take care of my currency above all else, and I shift out of the logical linear way of thinking about money and shift more into an energetic cathartic way of making money, managing my central nervous system, managing my energy above all else, top priority, even if it makes no sense to anybody else, the most unexpected things come in. I've had unexpected money come in to large chunks. I've had unexpected people come into my life that, that, I mean, some of my closest friends, if I are so talented and gifted and thank God we exchange our gifts. And because I, Thank God these people are invaluable, invaluable to me. The kind of self um, awareness that I can have and the self growth that I, that I've been able to, especially the last three years, which I know have been really difficult for everybody for different reasons. But for me, I've been going through such a, a, a metamorphosis that thank God I have people. I live like a very wealthy person, even though I'm not wealthy, especially right, especially as I've been pulling back, but I've learned that my energy is what sets my, my, it's my set of attraction. It's what sets my point of attraction. And that number one thing that drains my energy is relationships, any sort of relationship, every sort of relationship, relationship with money, relationship with, with, um, others, relationship with clients, relationship, with everything, everything is a relationship. And if we don't know how to manage relationships, we will be perpetually drained. So we have to develop the skill set. We absolutely have to. It's why Empath 101, it's like the basics, learn how to have boundaries, learn how to manage your, your energy, learn how to be discerning about your trauma and who to work with that work your trauma through with and who not to work it through with. Same with working with people who have trauma. If you're working with people who like, there's so much discernment here that has to be had. And so without talking too much about that one point, that's number one. 
is opening your heart, becoming aware of the dynamics of your relationship and shifting them accordingly. Now, I know there's certain things that can't just change overnight, but we can always change our relationship towards something, our energy towards something. We can always change that. We can change it in a split second. And that's why actually working with energy first is one of the quickest ways to move things in 3D. And we don't have to concern ourselves with how it ends up working out in 3D. We have to do the internal work and how it works out in 3D. Well, it's its its own mystery and its own part of the game and its own experience and its own part of being in this reality and learning in this way. So first it's the heart. Now I want to focus a little bit on our invincibility and our uniqueness chakra. I've talked about them before, the minor chakras above and below the heart. I don't teach about them having studied them in any sort of traditional way. This is how they were downloaded to me. And I teach them from that perspective. So there might be completely other perspectives about this. Um, but yeah, I want to talk first about invincibility. When I first saw this chakra, I saw it in my mind's eye when I was in meditation and it, it looked mine anyway. Everyone's looks different um, is from what I've learned. But mine looked like it was a little, almost like a little jewel and it looked like um, rainbow titanium quartz. And it was hard like that. And it had all the colors in it, like all the colors of the chakra, but mostly that really purplish iridescent color was coming through. And I heard this is your invincibility chakra. When your invincibility chakra is closed down, it's be closed down because of self-hatred um, or being against the self in some way. And then uh, I was talking to, it was a while ago, I'm pretty sure it was a client of mine that I was talking to about it. And she said that in a book that she read about, they talked about this chakra, which I call the invincibility chakra, being where our witch wound is, having a wound that has to do with our own personal power. This is where we get taken out. It's how we get taken out. It's in a very tiny, tiny way. But if this chakra remains closed, if we if we are ignorant to our invincibility, we don't access it. We don't access the energy signature of that. Now, what I've learned, because this has been a tricky one in terms of um, getting mine to open because it's it opens and closes and I've paid very close attention to what helps me open it and sustain it open, what closes it off. Um, obviously any self-hatred is number one, self-hatred, self-doubt, close it off. But also what's really interesting about this particular chakra is that when we, when we're open here, all doors are open to us. That's what makes us invincible. And what I heard was the reason this is, is because we have diplomatic immunity. When our, when our invincibility chakra is open, we are in direct connection with God or source or spirit or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> the source of word, we have direct connection. So we're no longer having to go through a middleman. And that changes the way we navigate everything. Because remember, this world is based on principalities that have been in charge for a very long time. And those principalities are based on lack and war. That's what, what our planet has been under the jurisdiction of for thousands of years. So when you turn on within you, the belief that you are invincible, really at a deep level, what you're saying is, because I know that's hard to even say, because we're humans, we die, that kind of thing. What I mean by that is we are eternal. When this is turned on, we're connected to our, our eternal selves. Our, some people call it the higher self. I call it the eternal self because it's the, the self that exists in my past, in my future, and in this present moment. And it sees all potentials. It's like that guardian that we have, the witness that we have throughout our lives. And it is an aspect of however we express ourselves in this particular body, but it's also beyond that. And so that to me, what, one of the um, affirmations that I started working with, and I've been creating my own subliminals and oh my gosh, I, mine are the best. Like I listen to a lot of subliminals, but I realize mine work the best for me. And I think it's because it's my own voice. And I, so in the course, um, the spell of astronomical abundance, I recommend and kind of show you how I make my own subliminals. Cause I really recommend working with your own, but nonetheless, you can work with mine too. Um, and I'll share them too in the course. And I'm going to be sharing some on my public YouTube channel as well, specifically affirmations to open up the invincibility chakra and our uniqueness chakra. But one of the affirmations that I've been using to work with this chakra here, my invincibility is I have diplomatic immunity. Now, when you're telling yourself this subconsciously, 
I can't tell you the crazy weird back doors that have opened up energetically and spiritually in ways that I didn't even know was a thing. And this is what I keep realizing more than anything when I turn on my personal currency and when I'm operating from my sovereign self is that we truly are not subject to the powers and the principalities of this world. We don't have to be anyway. We can, we can live under their jurisdiction, which means living under their rules, which means living under those belief systems, but we don't have to, we don't have to. And it's a scary place to be because and I've learned this, I've learned this. Maybe other people I know, people have crazy stories. So people probably had way deeper and more powerful and profound experiences than me when it comes to this. But nonetheless, I know what it's like to be completely out of the system and not attached to it at all. And I know what it's like to be in it. And I know the difference energetically. And I know even that you can be in it and not of it. And you can be of it and not in it. So there's all different sorts of ways this works, but as I was saying about the heart, it is about your relationship to power. It's all relational. So what is your relationship to power? What is your belief in regards to power? That's going to affect everything. So when you're subliminally programming yourself with this idea that idea that you have diplomatic immunity, honestly, the thought went through my head, they would probably censor. This is just like my conspiracy theorist mind, but like I could see that subliminal getting censored because it's freaking crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy what happens when you start working with the subconscious mind. I think you even have to be careful for sure. Um, but diplomatic immunity is one of those things. And what I mean by that is when when we are in our true sovereignty, we're in our own, our unique currency is on. And we are operating from our direct connection to source. That's helping us navigate everything we do and we don't do. And the decisions that we making that we're making are based on those instinctual relational dynamics that we have with God, with source, with power, instead of fear of power, or instead of fear of these principalities, fear of what might happen if this or this or this happens. It's truly like, I've never realized how powerful that verse is in the Bible that says you can't serve both God and money. It's true. You can't, you literally cannot, because when you turn on your sovereignty, your own creative will, you're working with an in totally different energy. And yes, money is involved and we're in a money system that's directed in a very specific way. And so we're, we're not like completely untangled from it. But what I've learned is energy trumps everything, including how money flows and money is its own entity. And it, guess what? It wants to restore the planet. Money wants, because if we don't live, it won't live anymore. That's what I've learned is that money actually is a very neutral resource. It's not good or bad. And it actually has its own will as well. And so what I've found even more interesting than anything else is that even money is wanting new. It's wanting new people to have it. It's wanting new grid systems. It's wanting to support people who have created systems that are self-sustaining it is wanting something new. And I really believe that we're part of it. And it's, we're part of this change that's happening on the money grid. We're a massive, massive part of it. And a big part of changing your relational dynamics with the grid itself is developing the belief that you have diplomatic immunity. You are not subject to the gods of this world. Yes, they are powerful. Yes, they influence Yes, yes, yes. We're not at war and we don't deny and we're not going against any God. We're just choosing what God we serve. And it's not money. And that changes everything because when we when we serve the God of our heart, when we serve like the source itself, it's where all power is. It transcends money. And that's what I was trying to say earlier, earlier about transcending money. When we start navigating our world via energy and via our spiritual capacity and our primal energetic capacity, you fully utilizing our human tech game over the grid changes because the money grid as it is, is so unnatural. It's so unnatural to our humanity. It's unnatural, but we're using it and we will continue to use it until we bypass it altogether and we understand how it all really works. And I know that what I'm talking about here is actually extremely advanced. Spirit showed that to me is like the full culmination of this won't be for 
further down the road, but it will, we will eventually be completely moneyless society on this planet. And that people will understand that the most powerful, richest people in the world are ones who have can know how to work with their energy, how to regulate their energy, how to control their energy, how to work with their energy. That that's where all the power, their creative energy, their flow, their craft, creative life force. That's what everyone's after is your creative life force, your attention, your belief. That's where the, that is the money. The money as it shows up in this world is just a weird represent, like it's just a symbol of that actually. And the weird game that money's twisted in is a symbol of our victim aggressor savior game that we've been in for thousands of years under the lack matrix principalities. So love diplomatic immunity and then working, going down here to our uniqueness chakra below the heart above the solar plexus, minor chakra. Um, the uh, this, I always say this, but my friend Karis is the one who introduced me to this chakra. And it's how I knew there had to have been one above it because as above, so below. All the, sh- all the chakras have a mirror. So the lower mirror of the invincibility chakra is our uniqueness. That's what she called it. It's our uniqueness chakra. And to her, her sounded like a electric guitar. And I loved that. The way that I see it is like a rainbow of colors. Like I see it as all different sorts of colors it, because it's, it represents our uniqueness and it, and, and it does, I, I believe everybody's makes its own unique sound that if our, if we could hear in certain decibels, we would actually hear the sound our, our whole energy field is making, but particularly our uniqueness chakra. And I think that when, when we're clear, when our energy from our heart is opened up and not being blocked by our fears or our trauma and we are fully in our diplomatic immunity. We just know that we're rooted in that as a belief. I have diplomatic immunity. I am not subject to the gods of this world. I, I, they're powerful. I respect them. All of that. I'm not going to war with the gods of this world, but I'm not subject to them because I'm subject to a different power because I chose to wake up to that. So it changes things a lot, but as we allow that to be open and we really anchor into this belief of diplomatic immunity and, and which really at a core level is coming from, I'm enough, I'm enough, there's enough, you're enough, I have value. It's hard to get to diplomatic immunity if you don't believe you have any value, if you're still struggling with self-hatred. And if that's where you are, know that this is where you need to work, is allowing yourself to be fully in your tech. The invincibility chakra also, I find when mine is on, I'm engaged primally. I'm primally engaged in my tech and particularly my psychic tech. I feel like my uniqueness chakra is where I'm engaged in primally in my craft, like the craft of being a human being. But when I'm engaged here, it's like very psychic. It's a very psychic invincibility. My When my invincibility chakra is on, I'm so aware of the astrals. I'm so aware of what my energy is doing in the astrals. And I'm aware that I can shift it really quickly. And what's weird is that I feel incredibly abundant because nothing is, when you're in that kind of power and awareness, nothing holds you back. Because you're not get you don't believe that anything else has power over you except for the power you're giving it. So again, it's so embodied. It's so in your, like rooted in your body. You've got to be in your body. Then your heart has to be open and allowed. And from there, when the love uh, transcends this idea of self-hatred or hatred of humanity, and then transcends the idea of mimic, because mimic is what blocks our uniqueness chakra. Mimic is where we, we, we just do things because we're told we're in school because we should get a degree or we're doing this career because that's what our parents told us to do or whatever, any of those things. We bought this because it's what someone my age should have. And that like, whatever, that's where we bust through. We bust through all that bullshit when our uniqueness chakra is turned on. And when we are primarily turned on to our unique energy and the way that it moves, what we get really honed in on here is preference. We get deeply honed in on preference. And the more we allow ourselves to have a preference, the more our uniqueness chakra gets turned on. And the more safe we are, by the way, a primal preference, which is very different than the preference of just wanting to be respected or um, wanting to feel good or those sort of things, which are, they're connected to primal preference as well. I'm not saying they're separate, but primal preference when we're primally preferring that preference protects us 
it's protective in nature and there is nothing wrong with protecting us. And this is part of the really BS belief that's gotten in with humans is that we, we believe we're a virus and that we're bad and that we should be punished. And so a lot of people don't even have their own theirs or humanity as a whole, as any sort of, um, priority for protection. And that's why humans are wide open right now. And it's sad. And what we get hit in our hearts, that's where we get hit, shuts down our invincibility, shuts down our uniqueness. So this is what we're reviving here. Um, so prefer creative preference is allowed. Pleasure is allowed. Being in the body is safe. These are these abundance codes. Diplomatic immunity. Diplomatic immunity is innate. Um, oh, yeah, this is like a whole big thing. Um, I almost like the, the second part that I wrote down here could be a whole other live. Cause I know I've been talking for an hour, so, um, I will end it here. And then maybe this is where we, we can dive into a little bit deeper in the membership, um, for our next spell, because it works perfectly because spell three of the ace of wands is all about evoking the spirit of our yes. Spell two has been about our yes. Spell one was about our no. Energetically, what is our no? How do we banish our no? Spell two is what is our yes? How do we invite the yes? How do we expand the yes in our auric field? Spell three is about evoking the spirit of our yes in our lives and, and having that relationship with it. So maybe I'll talk about this when we move into spell three. For those of you who are in the membership, sign up if you want, if you're not. Um, but the last thing I want to say here is that the heart itself, when we feel, when the heart is broken, we're always attempting to get needs met through a back door. This is where shadow contracts come in. And often our creative energy is in grid spaces where we're getting one need met that maybe we're unaware of that we're even getting met, but we're doing something to get that need met that we don't want to do. And there's no clear dialogue going on in those grids about what the real exchange is that's how you know when you're in a shadow contract when it's like okay it's supposed to be this but all this other stuff's going on but no, but it's not something that's verbalized there's a whole other thing going on there's a whole other dynamic going on here this can often happen with our jobs it happens with the government we say this is going on but what this other thing is actually really going on it's actually not about what people think it's about. It's about something total it's connected to the human shadow. It's connected to our shadow contracts with lack. Same thing here. And I guess what I want to end on here is that when, when we have been deeply wounded in lack and our creative energy has been in dynamics that have drained us and dynamics that, um, how do I want to say this? It's, it doesn't only drain us, but it wounds us. It wounds our capacity for self-belief. It wounds our ability to have empathy and to witness. It, dis, it makes us distrust our own humanity and humanity as a whole. So when, we, when we've been wounded here, if our hearts have been wounded, the, these, uh, these grid spaces that pull us in are manipulative, number one and bully us, number two. And if I want to end it on this, I think it's super important. If you want to turn on your personal currency, it is super important that you realize how you are being bullied. And one of the grids I, sh I shared in the announcement that I was going to share, how I personally pulled myself out of some grid spaces that have been very toxic and draining. And by the way, any grid space can be. Being online, being on YouTube can be toxic. Um, the new age movement can be toxic. Religion can be toxic. Politics can be toxic. And it all depends. It depends so much on what our personal beliefs are and why we're involved in those grid spaces to begin with. That, we have to look at that. But for me, what I realized in particular on the religion grid, I talked about this a little bit and it's one of the grids that I've been pulled in, most the fear grid around like, if you don't believe this, then it's bad and wrong and you could go to hell for it or whatever. Um, that doesn't really bother me so much as what happens when people start going back into it and doubling down. And I feel like that's happened quite a bit, not just like with people I know, but just online. And because of all the fear and all the conspiracy theories, people are 
anchoring down into extreme things. At least it seems to me, I just, I've just seen a lot of extremism and fundamentalism and it coming back as if, oh, this is the, we tried that, but now we better go back into fear and shut ourselves down and, and then spout off these mouthpieces that everybody says and has said 5 billion times. It doesn't offer anything new to the world, but energetically, it's just like, I'm sure sh- I'm shutting down and I'm going to war. And I feel like that is one of the ways that empaths get bullied a lot, especially for you, it could be in a religious grid. It could be in a political grid. It could be in the new agey grid, but it, there's elitism. It could be in the food grid. Like there, there's elitism around all of it. So different ways of eating that's it, it happens there. It's, it's insane to me. Like every diet has its own set of principalities and then their own believers that believe it to the core and will, and they're activists for it. So they, they the whole goal is to, to convert other people to their way, way of eating. And these are all different sorts of diets. Um, and you have people that are hardcore and then the ones who are more do it for other reasons who are not as hardcore and not as judgmental. Same with religion, same with politics. Same, this is in every single system. There is nobody and no system that's immune to this. And that's why it's really easy to get sucked in, especially if we don't feel safe and we're just looking for a team to, to cover ourselves with. Like I'm team whatever. So like we're the winners. I'm team vegan. I'm team Democrat. I'm team vax or no vax. I'm team, I, like whatever. Nonetheless, there is this massive division, which remember if we're divided, we shut down our currency. If we shut, if we shut down our relational currency, we've shut down our currency. So we are in the middle of such psychic division and we are being asked to choose a side or to choose a group or to choose an ideology and then to get behind it and then go to war as if it's the only one. That's what's happening. And this is the thing that will absolutely shut down your creative energy and your your craft is where all of your life force comes from. Your actual craft, your craft has to be protected. It has to be honed. It has to have discipline around it. Like you are the gold. You are the gold. You are the currency. And your and how well you manage your energy is going to de- be show and depend on how much money you make and how good your relationships are or how hard draining they are or everything about how your life feels to you is because of how you are relating to your power and to power as a whole. And this is where it needs to change. And if any part of you is in that space of feeling like you have to make a decision, you have to double down into a belief or an ideology, beliefs are important. Beliefs create our reality. So I'm not saying don't examine what you believe, but when it comes to groups, remember this entire planet has been programmed to go to war. That's why there's so many different groups and we'll use any excuse to go to war when we don't feel safe. And even if that excuse is you live under a different flag than me, you wave a different flag than me, or you have a different ideology than me, we we make up these arbitrary ways to try to see ourselves as separate so that we can justify this genocide that we're doing of our relational energy. And so it's bankrupting us and we do it in the name of being right and good and preserving what's valuable. And it is so nonsensical and so messed up. And I, and I want to end it here because one of the reasons I even wanted to do this live and talk about currency is particularly for empaths, because as I said earlier, empaths, usually that's the demographic of people who often struggle the most financially, or maybe at times do really well, but like the money definitely can easily reflect your energy and where you're at, because you're so aware of that you, it's all you. It's all you. And so you do have to be managed. You are the money. You need to be managed. You need to be managed well. You need to be managed by a wise investor who knows how valuable you are and who will prioritize you. First, we'll always give back. That's why the five laws of gold are key in astronomical abundance. We'll always give back to yourself. We'll always save some of your energy. You're not going to drain your energy. We'll always... um, Res- like honor and respect what you know and not get involved with things you don't know, not give your energy to things that you that you don't know, that you're not aware of, but but actually invest in what you do know, invest in what you have learned. You are the investment. You are a hundred percent the investment. You are the gold. So beginning here in my heart, where am I at? 
how do I feel in relationship to all things? And you can even make a list. Like, how do I feel in relationship to money right now? How do I feel in relationship to politics? How, how do I feel in relationship to my, my relationships and my, the main relationships in my life? Like get a, get a pulse, get a really good pulse on where you are and allow yourself to, to energetically calculate what is my energy doing right now? You have energy, you're alive. So you have currency and that currency can be expanded. And the more you open your heart to love and allow yourself to love what you love, that's key. Prefer and pivot, prefer and pivot, prefer, have a preference, have a preference, have a preference, have a preference, have a preference. Your preference matters and your consent matters. Prefer, pivot and consent and consciously consent and your consent matter. So many things that we get involved in, we don't actually consciously consent to. We unconsciously consent to it. And then we feel stuck in things that we don't know why we're in. And often then that's how fear, guilt, and shame is used because we feel like, well, we're in it. And well, these people are involved and da, 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 da. And I have to be a good person and whatever. So we just end up getting drained. We are like blood dolls. That is exactly how a lot of empaths, a lot of human beings end up being blood dolls for principalities of lack. They bully us. They are gods on this planet and we do not have to be subject to them. And the way that we get free is by ownership, fully owning our energy, fully owning ourselves and allowing ourselves to start really anchoring in this idea that I have diplomatic immunity. I am here as a diplomat for heaven on earth. And so that means everything that I am until my last breath, if I choose to go that way, Everything that I am is about finding as much a way to bring as much of me here as possible, as much of me present as possible, as much of my energy out and as self-sustaining as possible, not out and drained, but this way it comes back. It comes back. It comes back. This is our personal energy signature. This is the determination of how wealthy we are energetically, spiritually, and financially this is where it's all at. This is where everything's at. So if you are interested in going deeper into this, if you want to dive into my mini course that I'm releasing on Thinkific on April 8th, if you want to, it's just a mini course. Like I said, if you're on this live and if you comment on this video and just say something that you actually found valuable about this, um, you will automatically be put into a drawing to win um, a discount for the course. And I'm also also going to give away two spots, just give away two spots in the course for free. And then um, as long as you comment, I will give you a coupon to get the course for only $55 instead of 88, which is it's the, going to be the price that it's, that it comes out as. So you'll get it less. Um, yeah. And I, this is, this is what we're diving into. It's called the spell of astronomical abundance. It's all about turning on your personal energy signature. I have affirmations and subliminals to work with actually opening the sacral, not sorry, not the sacral, the invincibility chakra and the uniqueness chakra and the heart to really work with this area, this self-sustaining toroidal field. Um, it's a fun class. It's really, really fun. And I feel like I'm kind of just cannot wait because this is pretty badass and I don't know anyone else talking about it or teaching about it like this exactly. And I can say that it's honestly changed my life. I feel like I've learned a new part of my craft that I'm honing and is, is getting better and better. And I know I'm meant to be a master in this life. So I'm saying yes to it. Um, next level for me is learning how to manage my energy and money at a deep level. I can, I can like manifest whatever, but managing it and, um, being discerning in my relationships is key. That's where spirit's been taking me. That's where this course takes us share with you everything I've learned so far. I'm just, in, I'll share a lot more of my personal experiences in this course too. And the course has a discussion area in Thinkific. So you can chat with other people who are taking the course etc. So it'll be really fun. I'll be able to connect with you there. And um, yeah, just super excited about it. So if you want to join, click the link, it should be in the description box. You can email me for some reason, if you don't see it there, um, it should be right after I post it, I'll add it. But if for some reason it's not there, you can email me. I'll put my email address um, in the description box as well. And in the comment section and yeah, we'll go from there. Also, I'll just end it here. Um, you guys know that I do work with people one-on-one -on -one, and one of the things that I 
my mentoring package that I'm putting together is taking people through the Ace of Wands series together. So you work with me for three months doing all three spells. And that's pretty badass. It's a bigger package though. And I've had people ask me just for like one-on-one sessions. And so I've actually decided to um, also offer them in relation to turning on your personal currency signature. So working with this information that I have here, so it would be a one, just a one-on-one session. Uh, Well, it's a reading. So I essentially just channel it for you, but um, all specifically related to where you might be blocked in your personal currency just way more specific, unique energy for you on maybe how to remove your energy from certain grid spaces. I didn't even go as deep into this as I wanted to about grids. And so that's like a whole nother thing. I I need to do a whole, a whole series on grid work by itself. Um, but I do believe that grid work is one of the most powerful ways to learn how to manage our energy, because when we understand grids and understand how our energy moves with grids, how our inner, how our energy fuses with grids and the type of spiritual relationships we create with grid spaces, which are belief structures, um, that are (laughs) energetic first and foremost, they're always energetic first. Uh, when we learn how to work here, I believe this is like next level abundance because we were learning to grid shift instead of just like seeing ourselves in one stagnant grid. We begin to see, oh, there's an infinite amount of grids that I can be involved in, that I am involved in, and I get to prefer the one that I want. And that's what I will move into. So anyway, if you want a deeper look at this on your own personal en- energy signature, you can do a one-on-one session with me as well. Um, it's a channeled reading. So I basically email you get the info. I have questions for you. You email me back, answer all the questions. I don't take payment until I send you your reading, just so you know. Um, and I've never had anyone not pay me. So it would suck if somebody did not and I sent them their reading, but I just feel like I don't attract people like that. So anyway, um, that's available too. I usually only do about three a month. Um, I could do four just depending on the month. So if you want one, let me know. All right, you guys, I love you. I'm sorry that this couldn't actually be live, but I hope it was helpful anyway, and I will see you soon. Bye.